What I know it's been a couple of days, but just maybe what was the overall takeaway from, I know, what was the tough one at, at UCF? Yeah, just didn't get in the flow on either side. You know, um, I felt like um, every time we tried to get some momentum going, we couldn't get multiple stops in a row. Um, we, we haven't shot the ball well. In our last four games, we just have not shot the ball well. Um, and we didn't, and when you're not shooting the ball well, you can still win. You just got to stack some stops. And we just couldn't stack stops at that place. How do you, in practice, kind of like instill that confidence when you're going through like a team-wide shooting slump to just keep pushing through it and get that back? You just, you know, constantly shooting with it, you know. And, um, you know, I felt like uh, we were good from the foul line. Uh, we just have not shot the three ball well. Um, and just constantly shooting. We we're going to shoot a lot. We shot a lot. The guys come in, they put the time in. Um, we just got to, you know, step up and, 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 and make the shots. And, um, but, uh, man, we got good shooters. We got guys uh, that we're throwing confidence in them. I want them to keep stepping in and making those shots, and uh, it'll turn. And, uh, but that's how you instill confidence. Rep it out, rep it out. Mentally talk to them. It seemed like the last couple of games there's been a lot more fouls called, a lot more free throws. Have you noticed that? Just a difference yeah, in the way the game's been officiated? Next. Sorry. <laughs> I don't mean not to answer questions. I'm always available to answer. I got, uh, that one's a tough one for me to, to talk about. How nice was it to put the free throw kind of conversation to bed, at least? On yeah, the side? and we really, with our guys, we just repped it out. We keep constantly taking more. It's what our guys told you about. What do you do? You just keep repping it, keep talking about it. I, I was talking about how much I wanted to get to the foul line. And when they hear their coach saying, man, we got to get there more, get there more means you know you have confidence in them. So I thought, I think we're 18 for 22. Coach, is there anything that you saw pregame, maybe during warmups, that indicated it might be an off night? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Guys were ready. They were so locked in, fired up, um, nothing. How great is the sense of urgency being back at home twice this week, knowing that you went 0-2 the last time you had this opportunity? I haven't talked about that from the past, but we've, we're, we're, we've spent a lot of time talking about BYU. and I'm, excited to talk about a couple questions with them because um, they're elite but uh, you know our guys it's whether it's road or, or home um, our guys know that it, the, the, our prep is a big part of it our prep in this league knowing what to expect from their offense knowing what to expect from their defense and this is as difficult as a prep as you're going to play um, and uh, as we get in talking about BYU they they run their offense as fluid as anybody in the country it's, it's, it makes basketball savants um, excited when you see their offense. The, the amount of shooters they have, they're one of the top, they, I think they are one or two in the nation in threes. I think the Oklahoma fans are going to see that there's, you're not going to stop them from taking them. They're going to take them. You just, you're trying to contest them. You're trying to limit them and push them out farther, but they're going to they're gonna do what they do, and they do it extremely well. Um, they're older, they run as good an offense, they're seventh in the net, but they're also, you know, defensively, they're also in the top 25. They're good on both ends. They're an elite team. They're a team that can make, after watching a lot of teams on tape this year, they're a team that can make a deep, deep run in this tournament because they guard and they shoot and they're older and they, they run phenomenal offense. Rosters change so much from year to year. Does it help that Latre's played them three years in a row? That have you asked him about anything? Yeah, we've talked to him, and he knows. I mean, I, he, uh, um, you know, he knows they're difficult to guard because the way they move it, they space it. They're going to shoot it. I mean, they're going to shoot it from deep. They're going to shoot it quick. They play fast, and then they, their movement and spacing, their bigs can really pass. Um, it is a, uh, it's it's a, and there's a reason why they're. They're so good offensively. I mean, they got the pieces. They're well coached, um, and yeah, Trey's guarded them. But um, you know, there's it's new year, new thing, new system for them. Uh, not for them, but for Trey. You mentioned uh, you know BYU seventh in that. Did you talk to you guys at all about what kind of opportunity this is for like a resume builder? Yeah, we talked about it. I mean, they know they know that we're we're fighting. We're back. You know, every every game you're back. You're trying to go on a one game win streak. You know, every game is 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 a big NCAA tournament game. You know, and, and uh, you know, so it's not the pressure of it, but it's just like, you know, they, they know how good they are. They know it's a quad one win um, um, if we can get it. Um, they got a lot of respect for BYU. They've watched them on tape now two days. And uh, so it's going to be, um, 
it's going to be a challenge to, to really get out on their shooters. I mean, they, they, they all can shoot. I don't we've played a team where everybody can shoot like at that level. The way that they create those looks too, what's kind of like the first headache defensively when, when you're like- Transition's the first. They like, they push it so fast. I mean, they run so hard, they space, and they have, their point guard is elite. I think he's one of the best point guards in the country. He finds the ball, the ball has eyes when it's in his hand. I mean, it's finding the shooter all the time. Um, I think he's, I think he's terrific. And, uh, but they, they all are locked and loaded. They have a very, they all have catch and shoot quick releases. Um, they have deep range. Um, and I think it's gonna be a great challenge for our defense. I think uh, the fans are gonna see a style of play with them and it's gonna, we can't hang our head. They're gonna hit threes. I mean, it's, you don't average 13 or whatever they're averaging. Um, you're not gonna take it away. You just gotta, you're just hoping to limit it and make them more contested. What kind of challenges does the big guy Khalifa bring just in terms of what he can do, not just shooting, but passing the ball as well? So I, I think they're, they got two of the most unique centers in the country. I think they got this passing big who's the best passing big. He reminded me of the big kid I had at Loyola, Crudwick, yeah. you know, who could just, I mean, he could turn, throw the ball over the top. He, he kind of, you run offense through him. And then Treor is one of the best post scoring. I mean, I thought he was the key to their win against West Virginia at 24. So what a luxury. You got a, a superior passing, facilitating five, and you have a superior post block score um, in that five. So I think that's, that's what makes them strong too, is the pieces they have. I don't know if it's maybe because they're new to the Big 12 this year, but it seems like they don't really get talked about that much. Um, I don't know if it's from the West Coast or what, but I think in our league, the buzz is there. The buzz is there. Everybody's, you know, in our, in, within our circles is talking about, you know, how, how, how well they are. They play both sides. I mean, they really do. They're top 25 defense, top 10 offense, older, veteran, well coached. So I, I, in our circles, they're, they're talked about. I mean, people know how good they are and they're a team that can make a huge run. Latrey mentioned that ball movement the last couple of days has been a big conversation for you guys offensively. Maybe just what is the focus tomorrow offensively against BYU? Well, I just thought we were, you know, um, I just, I just thought we, we, we weren't in sync. You know, we weren't, um, you know, the, and, 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 and when you don't make shots, it doesn't look in sync. Trust me, when you start making shots, you look, oh, things are clicking. Um, so that's a big part of it. Uh, you know, uh, it was good to see Trey get back in the flow. And Trey, Trey got in the flow and uh, got some shots going. But, um, you know, I think our, our you know, Javion, Los, and, and Lotega, those three, um, got to get them in the flow. I think Rivaldo's continuing to give us great minutes. Um, and, uh, but we'll, you know, I think the guys, you know, offensively, we, there's been games we've been really good. And uh, there's games where we are, but it, you know, it's the old Brad Stevens line. You know, you can overanalyze every number. If, if it comes down to you, it's, it's a shot making game. You know, we got to make some shots. I hate to fall back onto the Caden Cooper question, but how's he looking in practice? Is he closer to really getting that? Still time? working hard, still working hard. Phenomenal attitude. Um, and uh, you never know. You never know because I think he's moving. Yeah, he could be. Um, and uh, I just think he's. Um, he's doing really well. He's doing really well. We're really pleased with every single day he comes ready to practice and learn. And uh, I think he'll be ready when his shot comes because uh, his attitude's been great. Porter, when you play a team that shoots like this, is there any discussion of don't try to compete, don't try to outshoot them? You know, when they're hitting a few threes, don't try to go down and force them. It's interesting you said that because we watched a team um, play against them on tape this morning that like they came and hit three threes in like 40 seconds. And then the other team, you know, because it, it, it sometimes gets daunting. You throw up nine points in like 30 seconds. You just can't do that. But uh, so you don't want to get in that. But we, we've got to step in and make some threes. You know, we, we've, I would we hit three against such a, we can't be, we can't be outshot like 14 threes to three. That's a, that's a huge difference in the game. So we can shoot it. We just need to step in and, sh and shoot our shot. When it comes to this new Big 12 scheduling, how do you feel like the team has responded to the, the new, uh, type the new of teams? Mm -hmm. I, I think, that I, you know, I think they have a lot of confident respect for them. There's a lot of respect for the new teams. I mean, we played Cincinnati, we played Central Florida. Um, we've been scouting against BYU. We've seen Houston on TV. So I think from the beginning, they, they knew that this, those all four teams were gonna be right in, fit right in with the top conference in the country. And uh, I think our guys feel that. Um, they were, they, they, they had no let up. They had a great respect for Cincinnati and Central Florida. And I know with this scout, they're, 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 they got a tremendous respect for BYU as well.
for they look, you know, they have five guys that average in double figures. They have another guy that averages nine. So they play, you know, six guys can really score. Their offense looks really fluid. Is it as good yeah. as it looks? Yeah, we're, it is good as it looks. I mean, they, 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 they space it, they run it, they move it with a pace, tremendous pace, um, tremendous point guard facilitator, um, length of shooters, you know, their four man 6'11 who can come off a screen and shoot it. I mean, they got tremendous size, length, shooters, and they're more athletic. They're, they're athletic. They can go downhill. They're not the slow team. They play fast. They are fast. It's a, I'm telling you, basketball savants, when you watch them, you will it, you will appreciate the way they run offense and shoot it. So defensively, this is going to be a, a master game. You've got to play great man-to-man. -man we, we've, we've got to be able to get to their shooters in transition, and then we just can't. We've got to play possession by possession. You know, we just can't have let-ups. We're going to try to stay fresh. Sorry. We're going to try to trade fresh and play, play a lot of different guys and keep them fresh because you have to. You, they, they run so hard. They, they, the ball moves so fast. They're going to get threes. It's not like you're, we're going to sit here and say, wait, hey, we got to limit and have them take 12 threes. No, they're going to still take 35 threes. You know, we just got to, we got to contest them. We've got to really get out and guard them. Going back to ball movement, John's had a lot of good high-low looks the past few games. Is that something you're going to kind of try to emphasize against BYU or not as much? Yeah, I think John, John's, John's one of our better passing bigs. I mean, he can really pass. and. Um, they, Central Florida ran a handful of zone, and uh, John made some really nice passes out of the zone. Um, they ran a, a different coverage, and, and J yeah, John, John can really pass. Um, looking for John to get some scoring, you know, really want him to score in there um, as well. I think that you know that's one of the things he did before he got here, score. So we got to get him some more looks to score, and uh, but he definitely is is has done a nice job passing the ball.